I cannot believe I just watched that movie. Oh. Bienvenue and welcome to 150 Days of Winter. Hello. Seven screws, one plate. Welcome to the review of a little known ski movie called The Guatemalan Persuader. And before you ask, no, I haven't a clue what a Guatemalan Persuader is. If anyone does, please leave a comment down below because I looked up on like urban dictionaries, couldn't find anything. Before we start the review, I want to give a shout out to a guy called Mike Powell, who, after watching one of my other ski movie reviews, went and recommended this one. The fact that I had to watch this movie to review it, Mike, if you are not subscribed to my channel, this is worthy of a subscription, at least, okay? And maybe even hit the like button as well okay and of course if you you want to be like Mike then please suggest another ski movie for me to review to give you some background on this film this film was made in 2003 by a skier called Nick Merson and according to Glenn Plake who has a little role in the film it wasn't really made to sell I think it sold a few hundred copies. I think if you're being generous, and I can understand why. Of course, it, when you watch it, you probably will understand why no one bought it. I think it's made to make a point about sponsors who wouldn't touch this generally with a, uh, a 10 foot pole because of what goes on in it. So this movie has reached sort of cult status, I would say, between a certain set of skiers. However, whenever you use the word cult, they're either really low budget or really, really bad. And I guess people like them because they're bad. Now, I'm not going to go as far to say that this is so bad that it's good, but let me just say you're either going to love it or hate it, okay? It's very polarizing. It's an acquired taste to start with. If you suffer from any of these following ailments, you shouldn't watch this film. However, on with the review. Looking at the list of skiers on this film, I thought it had every chance of being amazing. However, this all changed less than one minute in with an opening sequence which featured the legendary Glenn Play. Without wanting to spoil the surprise, here are some words to describe Glenn's opening. Cleaning the windows, or as Aussies might call it, Spitting the Winkle. It is actually the perfect barometer for the rest of the movie. If after seeing Plake and any of the following thoughts went through your mind, like, dude, sweet, awesome, cool, then carry on through the, uh, through the, through the next hour of this movie. So, with every ski movie, there are, you could split them up into two sections. The skiing stuff, and the non-skiing stuff. So, to begin with, I'm going to review the skiing part of this, okay? For me, it's a ski movie. That should be quite important, okay? To start out, to be generous, for 2003, the, the, the ski tricks in this movie are impressive, okay? Compared to what is nowadays, no. Comparing this to other ski movies, of the same time period almost every area comes up short okay the majority of ski footage is taken from I'd say about six half pipe slope style competitions and I think the best way to describe it would be almost that these are like the home movies of Nick Merson and his ski pals okay I think that's, uh, you know, and looking at the credits afterwards, th th there were loads of skiers who were the cameramen. The framing isn't always right. The, the lighting isn't always right. Things that, you know, 
it, it's all very rough and ready. That should be taken into account, okay? And after 30 minutes, the re repetitious locations of the tricks and the like edgy, gross content just became boring. I noticed in 2003, there was another ski movie that came out called uh, The Fall Line from Matchstick. And as I was watching this, I suddenly realized that there's a lot of footage that I was getting a bit of deja vu, so to speak. Uh, and a, a, a classic example would be that, um, like, Jay Quinlan, who does stunts on the back of a skidoo. And basically, he was trying to backflip a skidoo, which is incredibly difficult by the looks of things. And um, there's a lot of it getting halfway crashing, people falling over, hurting themselves, things like that. And of course, I then went and watched Fall Line and was like, oh wow, look, there's Jay Quinlan doing exactly the same thing, only filmed a lot better. I'm sure Matchstick Productions' budget was like a hundred times more than Nick was. So that's the skiing stuff. What about the non-skiing stuff? Without going into too much detail, the non-skiing stuff bits are at their best trying to be jackass with copious amounts of blood, shit, piss, vomit, which most of which is fake. And I'm not trying to in any way belittle by saying it's fake. Um, some of it is real, but if you've ever seen the Shane McConkey machete advert that he did for Volant, that's the sort of injuries we're talking about because they are so obviously fake. Again, when somebody falls and goes, oh my God, I've hurt myself. You go, I know you haven't hurt yourself. This is so obviously fake, okay? So, you know, you can't really be sympathetic when you, it's just like you say, good makeup, okay? And please, I don't wish any real pain on these skiers. If you wanted me to, to say, what are the highlights? I'd say, well, again, uh, if you wanted to see a very young Tanner Hall or Candy Tuvex or even the late Sarah Burke, those would be like the standout sequences throughout, okay? But like I say, only just, as I say, after spending an hour watching this, I felt violated. I think that is a, uh, a good description for it. Trying to put it in the mindset of someone who was in the like early 2000s, in their maybe 20s. I can imagine that back then this film would have been right up certain people's street. I don't think it's aged very well for people in their 20s in the 2020s. Try to give it the benefit of the doubt and think what would 30 year old me, if he had seen this in 2003, have thought. And again, I might have watched it once and it would have been, I think it would have been forgotten. It would have been, okay, well, that was interesting. Uh, I just need to go and wash my eyeballs out with soap. Personally, after all that, I would give it a, a D grade, like a D minus. If I was being, like, if I was being really generous, the Glen Plake opening would take that up to a D plus, okay? Which, depending on where you are, is a pass. In some places in the world, it's a fail. But again, I leave that up to you. I leave it to you. After everything that I've said, if you want to go and watch the film, the link is down below. If you do watch the film and you feel that I've been a bit too mean about it, um, then please leave your comments down below. If you'd enjoyed this review and you'd like to see more of them, again, leave your suggestions down below. If you want to support the channel, click the subscribe button click the like button, leave a comment, and on that, I will see you all in the next movie. Ciao.